Okay, in today's video, we get to talk about absolute extrema, absolute minimums, absolute maximums. What's your absolute highest point for the whole entire function? What's your absolute lowest point for the whole entire function? But the reason why we waited on this is because uh, this gets interesting because absolute maximums and absolute minimums don't necessarily exist for certain functions. Take, take a basic exponential function. So, or not, not exponential, take a basic uh, quadratic function. So x squared plus bx plus c, right? We know the shape of a quadratic function, right? It gives me some sort of parabola. Okay, and since this is positive x squared plus bx, uh, this is an upwards facing parabola. Okay, well, looking at that shape, this will have an absolute minimum value, right? This point right here represents the absolute minimum. But because my function shoots up to infinity on both sides, there is no absolute max. So this is a very common thing that happens with a lot of functions is uh, some functions don't have a, a maximum or minimum. Th uh, this is true, of course, for a linear function. Right? If you have a linear function, there's no absolute or absolute, or absolute minimum or absolute maximum because the function just continues to increase as I as I go farther to the right, and it continues to decrease as I go farther to the left. Okay. Um, if I were to just switch this, if I were to just put a negative in front of my quadratic function, what does that do? All that's going to do is just flip the parabola downwards. And in this case, I now have an absolute maximum, but I don't have an absolute minimum. Okay. Uh, this is a good, good practice of, of the different shapes of power functions. If you have an x cubed function, right, that gives you, any cubic function gives you this type of shape. And this is in the same boat as my linear function, right? Because I'm going off to infinity on one end and down to negative infinity on the other end, there is no absolute minimum or absolute maximum, no absolute extrema at all. So when I look at absolute extrema, there's this possibility that there might not actually be an absolute maximum or an absolute minimum. Let's take a look at an example, okay? Let's take a look at a function to the fourth power. Okay, so 2x to the fourth minus 16x squared. Okay, well, to help us out, first of all, we need to decide, is this going to have an absolute max? Is this going to have an absolute min? Well, what's going to help us make that decision is knowing the rough shape of, just the general shape of a function to the fourth power, okay? So important things to, 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 to recognize. First off, what's the sign in front of my highest uh, power? So my highest power here is x to the fourth. What's my sign in front of it? Just positive. I don't have a negative, okay? What does that mean about my, my, my function? Since this is an even power, um, my function is going to look something like it's going to go up on either end. And since this is to the fourth power, I'm going to have one little hiccup in the middle. Okay. Uh, if, you, if, if this is something that doesn't seem very familiar to you, uh, this is something you can look up just general shapes of power functions to kind of get an idea of this. But once again, because the power is even, I know it's going to go either up in both directions or down in both directions. And because your leading coefficient is positive, I know it's going up in both directions. So what does this tell me? First of all, it tells me there is no absolute maximum. 
So I'm only looking for the absolute minimum. Well, where should I look for my absolute minimum? I need to know where these points are. Okay, how do I do that? Find the derivative, set it equal to zero, right? I need to find the critical points. So let's do it. I'm gonna find my derivative, eight x cubed minus 16 times two is 32 minus 32 x. Okay, set that equal to zero. I can factor, I can pull out an eight x and I'm left with x, x squared minus four. Solve both my terms and I get critical points of zero and positive or negative two, right? Any, all three of those numbers, if I plug them in to the derivative, I'm gonna get zero, okay? So I have three possible points. Zero is probably this point in the middle, which means it's probably not my absolute minimum, but I can just double check anyway, okay? And now I need to decide whether they're minimums or maximums. Well, because I'm looking for absolute minimum, I can actually take a shortcut here. Instead of going through my first derivative test or my second derivative test, I actually have a shortcut that I can take. All I really need to do is look at what the corresponding output value is for these points. What do I get when I plug in two to my function? What do I get when I plug in zero? What do I get when I plug in positive two? Okay, let's try it out, okay? f of negative two is equal to two times negative two to the fourth minus 16 times negative two squared, okay? This gives me, I think once you plug it all in, you get negative 32. If I plug in zero, I get two times zero to the fourth minus 16 zero squared, and I end up with zero. And then when I plug in positive two, because I'm plugging positive two into two even exponents, I end up getting the same thing that I got when I plugged in negative two, negative 32. What does that tell me? That tells me that my output for negative two and positive two are both lower than my output for zero, so, but my outputs are the same. So my absolute minimum occurs at x equals uh, at the following two points at two and negative 32 as well as negative two and negative 32. So both of those would be my absolute minimum. So you might be wondering, well, how do I know that these are my ab that these are my absolute lowest points? Well, I want to remind you that I know the shape of the graph looks something like this, and which means which means that my absolute lowest points have to occur at both or one of these two points, and because those are local minimums, I know that they have to occur at one of my critical points. Okay, and so based off of those two kind of logical pieces, I know that these have to be my absolutely lowest points. Okay, perfect. So uh, we found out that this function does not have an absolute maximum, but it does have an absolute minimum that occurs in two different places, at positive two and at negative two. Well, let me ask you this question. Is there a way that I can guarantee to have an absolute max or an absolute minimum? Okay, let's go back to this x to the third example. And I'll make it a little bit bigger. So let's say I have x to the third or some cubic function. Okay, so I've got x cubed plus bx squared plus cx plus d, some cubic function, right? And it looks something like this. Ooh. Like we said before, I don't have an absolute max or an absolute min because I'm going off to infinity as I go as far as I want to the right, and I'm going down to negative infinity as far as I, as, as I go off to the left. Well, is there a way that I can manipulate this to where I will have an absolute max and absolute min? Well, the answer is, 
what if I just look at a specific range of x values? What if I only look from here to here, right? If I stop the function at a and stop the function at b, then I'm ignoring anything that happens after and anything that happens before. If I do that, now do I have an absolute max and an absolute min? I absolutely do, right? Now it is possible for me to have an absolute max and absolute min. In fact, I'm guaranteed to have an absolute max or an absolute min. So uh, let me, let me, so let's make something very clear. For any function f of x with a finite domain. Okay, that means it's bounded on both sides. I have a starting point, I have a set starting point and a set ending point. Okay, so let me put that in parentheses. Bounded on both sides. Uh, the, so for, for any function with a finite domain, the absolute max and absolute minimum uh, will exist. Both of them are guaranteed to exist. It's guaranteed, okay? Um, so let's look at an example of this. Okay. Um, consider the function f of x equals x plus 16 over x. Okay. Once again, if I don't give you bounds, there's no guarantee that this will actually have an absolute max or actually have an absolute min. So what I'll do is I'll say we're going to look in this interval from 4 to 25. Okay, we're going to look at this interval from x. Um, x has to be greater than or equal to 4 and less than or equal to 25. Okay. So where, so in order to find the absolute max and absolute minimum, uh, I need to know where they can possibly occur. So if I come back up here and look at this graph, where can my absolute maximums and minimums occur? Well, of course they can occur at any local maximums or local minimums that I have, right? In this case, my absolute minimum would be my local minimum. But what's my absolute max? It turns out that my absolute max is one of my endpoints. So this was my absolute minimum, but my absolute maximum ended up being one of my endpoints. So my possible points, my possible places where I could have an absolute extrema or an absolute max or an absolute min are at my critical points or my endpoints. So let me write that down. The absolute extrema, okay, minimums or maximums can occur at the critical points or the end points. Okay, well, with that in mind, first of all, that means I have to find my critical points, right? So let me rewrite my function and then I'll find the derivative. F prime of X is equal to one plus negative 16x to the negative square, or x to the negative two. Okay, I will set that equal to zero, right? Find your derivative, set it equal to zero, because I'm finding these critical points, and I get one is equal to 16 over x squared. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm simplifying a little bit, right? That negative two exponent means I can put it in the denominator. I'll multiply both sides by x squared. I get x squared equals 16, and I get x is equal to positive or negative four. So those are my critical points, positive or negative four, okay? Well, 
so so my 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 absolute extrema can occur at the, at at either these points or these points okay so how do i test where which ones are my absolute maximums or at which ones are my absolute minimums i use a table so now let's go ahead and make my table and test what my function value is at those points okay well let's start with let's start with my endpoints what happens when i plug in four f of four is going to be four plus 16 over four which gives me 16 divided by four is four that's just equal to eight okay so i get eight when i plug in four what do i get when i plug in 25 let's see if i plug in 25 i get 25 plus 16 over 25 16 over 25 doesn't really simplify. Um, so I get 25 and 16 25ths. <laughs> okay. Now let's look at my 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 uh, critical points. Well, I've actually already done the work for 4. 4 was one of my endpoints, so I don't need to plug in 4 again. What about negative 4? What I plug in negative 4? I don't need to plug in negative four either because why not? Negative four is not in my domain. Negative four is less than four, right? So it's it's not in my domain. Uh, I, I should just write is not in the domain. So I don't need to test negative four either. With this specific problem, it turned out that all I needed to do was test the endpoints. Okay, that doesn't always happen. There's, there's quite a few other problems where uh, you'll need to test both the endpoints and the critical points, and they're not going to be the same thing. And the critical points will be within your interval. Okay, but in this example, all I need to do is just test the critical points. So, what's my conclusion? I have a local maximum at since I got a bigger y value at 25 that's my local maximum and then I have a local minimum at x equals 4 because I got a lower x va lower output value at x equals 4 okay uh, good luck with your homework on for 2.4 and let me know if you have